we're going to sketch y equals 1 over 5 minus x. And the hint here is to first sketch what, remember all this time I say, sketch what you know, then graph what you need. So I know how to graph that. At least you should be able to graph that. What is that? It's a line that has a y-intercept at 5, positive 5, and the slope is negative 1, so I'm going down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, yes? Down 1 over 1. So this is what my line looks like. It's a very nice line, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to gray this out because this is not what... I need to graph. This is only my starting spot. So we graph the line. We graph what we know. Then we're going to reciprocate that line. Why are we reciprocating the line? Because that's what it's asking us to sketch. It's saying sketch the reciprocal of this line. That's essentially what it's saying there, right? So what's the process? To sketch 1 over f of x, we determine the reciprocal of all the y values. The original function's x-intercept become vertical asymptotes. So where is my vertical asymptote at? Five. At 5. If you don't have an x-intercept then we don't have a vertical asymptote. Any y value that is blank or blank will stay the blank for the reciprocal function. What do I want there? 1 or negative 1 will stay the same. What's that called? Invariant points. So find your 1s. Here's a 1. Here's a negative 1. They stay the same. Where f of x is positive, 1 over f of x is what sign? If you take a positive number and you flip it, what does it become? No, it's still positive. It's still positive. I'm not switching signs here. I'm just flipping it, right? Where f of x is negative and I flip it, 1 over f of x is still negative. That's the key. Large y values from f of x become what when I reciprocate it? Very small and very small y values become very large. That's the key here. So where is the very small? Between the vertical asymptote and that vertical um, and that invariant point 1. Do you see these are small numbers? There's a half, there's a 1 over a million there. You know, it's very small numbers here. So when I flip that, it becomes very big. What happens on the left of the, the invariant point, where it's going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Yes, it, when you flip that, it becomes smaller. And there we go. Asymptote coming off the axis. Some of you guys are going to lose lots of asymptote marks because your asymptotes are wherever the heck you put it. Like, it has to be at the x-axis here. And it has to be hugging it, right? The arrowhead can cross the x-axis, but your curve should not, okay? But it should hug. Okay, so between negative 1 and 0, what do you have right there? Small. When you reciprocate that, it becomes big. So these are small negatives, they become big negatives. So then that goes like that, right? This is getting bigger and bigger and bigger negatives, this gray. So what does that become? Smaller. So then again, there's where we're having our asymptote coming off of there. So again, you either erase the line or you use a different color to show me what the answer is. But you can't leave that line there and think that that's okay. Okay? Okay, next one. Consider y equals 1 over x squared plus 4. Graph the function, the equations of the vertical and 
horizontal asymptotes in any invariant point, what is the domain and range? Was I supposed to find the domain and range in the other one? No. Okay. So, what do I know how to graph? Yeah. It's always going to be whatever's on the bottom there. We know how to graph that. How do you graph that? The parabola that got shifted up four. So, one, two, three, four, and then it's just a base graph. So, one, one, two, four, yes? Two, one, two, three, four. There is my original um, thing I'm starting with. So I'm going to gray that out. Gray it out. There we go. Okay. Is everybody good with what I started with? Okay, now we need to reciprocate it. So the first step is where am I going to have a vertical asymptote? Are we going to have a vertical asymptote? No, no vertical asymptote because there is no x-intercepts, right? X-intercepts mean the height is y, y is 0. When you flip that, um, that's when you get undefined, where you get the vertical asymptotes, right? Okay, so what's the next step? My invariant points of 1's and negative 1's stay as of 1 and negative 1's. Do I have any 1's and negative 1's here? No. So I go on to the third step. Start reciprocating height. So what's a height of 4 become? 1 over 4. What's a height of 5 become? 1 over 5. 6. I can do 10, but what is this going to be? It's, it's going to be a speed bump looking thing. So it's, it's just going to little loop. There we go. And my horizontal asymptote is at? y equals 0, no invariant points. Any questions there? So what's the domain here? What's the domain? Domain is the x's. So what is it? Yeah, all reals or negative infinity to positive infinity, yes. What's my range? Yeah, does it include zero? Zero, two, how high does it get? One over four, very good. And does it include one over four? Yes, so that would be a square bracket on that. <laughs> okay, Ooh. How do we do this one? Again, we need to graph what we know. So we're going to start by graphing that parabola. Ooh. So I'm going to call it f of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. So if we want to have it in... Um, you can tell... What, what are you trying to say? It's So this is not in complete of the square form, so we don't know the vertex. We could factor it and get the x-intercepts, right? Is that what you're trying to say? So what is this factored to be? x plus 3, x plus 4, which means my x-intercepts for this parabola is right here. Yeah. What else can we do? We can complete the square, sure. So f of x equals x squared plus 7x, leave a space, plus 12. So we take half, sorry, this should be an x squared, um, half of 7, which is 3.5. So x plus 3.5 squared is, sometimes 3.5 is harder to square. Like, this is just 7 over 2, so that means I'm adding... 49 over 4 and subtracting 49 over 4. You see what I'm saying? Like if I don't have a calculator, 3.5 squared might be tough to figure out. But 7 over 2 is pretty easy to square because that's just 49 over 4. So this is the same as that part. Now I need to actually um, do some 
subtraction here. The problem is, is 12 is a whole number and 49 over 4 is a fraction. But I could change 12 to a fraction. Yeah, it's 48 over 4, subtract 49 over 4. So what do I get? Negative 1 over 4. So my final answer is f of x equals x plus 7 over 2 squared minus 1 quarter, which makes kind of sense that it's about here, right? Just a little bloop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you could kind of do the the one ones from here. Up. Okay, so we can do the pattern of up one over one. So up one or over one, up one. So, you know, it's going to be like that. Over two, up four, one, two, three, four, something like that. Just so you can get the, rec the rest of the shape to it. Yeah? Okay. So, ooh! Well, Holy smokers. What the heck just happened there? <laughs> uh, I need to gray this out, but the problem is... Okay. So... Where do we have vertical asymptotes? Oh, it's just a base graph, so I went over one, up one. You know, it's kind of in between, but just so I get a general shape. It's three. It's minus three and a half, negative a quarter. That's what I got from my vertex form. This is, this is. Uh, so my vertex is at negative seven over two, negative one quarter, right? Okay, so where's my vertical asymptotes? Yes, negative 3 and negative 4. This is like a weird looking one. Okay, then what's the next step after I do my x-intercepts? My 1s. And then keep it as 1 and 1. And I don't have a 1 in the negative zone. That's okay. Okay. So, yeah, this part is the easy part, right? Smaller becomes larger, bigger becomes smaller. So we're going to have an asymptote coming off there. Smaller becomes bigger, bigger becomes smaller. So we have an asymptote coming off there. So is everybody good with how I got those two sections? I have a third section here. Does anybody know the lowest point that that middle section goes to? Negative a quarter. So if I reciprocate negative a quarter, what do I get? Yeah, I get negative 4. So that becomes, in the middle of it, negative 4. And what's happening between negative a quarter and 0 there? They're really small, right? So what happens when I reciprocate really small? They get really big. So it's going to go like this. This is an interesting one for domain and range. What's my domain? Do you want to do it as x is an element of reals? Sometimes it's easier. OK, x is an element of the reals. x cannot equal negative 4 and negative 3. Yeah? Okay, how about the range? This one might be easier to do it as interval. You see the range is negative infinity up to negative 4. And then there's a big gap, and it starts again at 0 and goes up, right? So negative infinity to uh, negative 4, but it includes negative 4. And then it starts back up at 0 to infinity. So now we're trying to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Does everybody know how to find this algebraically? Yes, yeah, set x to 0, solve. Set y to 0, solve. So do you want to try these first?
You want me to try the first one? Okay, so if I want to find um, the y-intercept, I set x to 0. So what do I get? We should be able to look at it. 1 over 5. Does everybody understand how I got 1 over 5? x goes to 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. It's 1 over 5, yeah? Okay, for my x-intercept, maybe I'll, I'll show my work a little bit. Um, that's when y goes to 0. So 0 equals 1 over x plus 5. Does everybody know how to cross multiply? Cross multiply that up. What do we get? 0 equals 1. Does that make sense? Can 0 equal 1 ever? No. So what does this mean graphically? There is no x-intercepts. None. Okay? And if you think about that for a second, if I were to do a quick sketch of what this looks like, I would start with a line. Yes? Does everybody see this would be a line to start with? And then I would reciprocate the line. So the line is at 5. It looks like this. So I'd have a vertical asymptote where it hits, and then I'd have the floop floop. Do you see I wouldn't have an x-intercept? Does that make sense to you? Okay. So next one, what's my y-intercept? Yeah, 1 over negative 4 or negative 1 fourth, yeah? What about my x-intercept? What do I get there? So again, for my x-intercept, I set y to 0, and I get this. And what happens again? So that means I get none again. Again, if you look at this graphically, what would I start with? I would start with a line that's at negative 4, up 3 over 1, something like this. Then you get your vertical asymptote, floop, floop. Do I have an x-intercept? No. no. It, well, that's my point coming up, right? Yeah, same. If all your x's are at the bottom, when you cross multiply, they're always going to be wiped away, and you'll never have an x-intercept, right? Okay. Grade 12, we'll see ones where it's differing, but in grade 11, we always have either a linear bottom or a quadratic bottom, and there's nothing else on top there. So when we cross multiply it over, we'll always get 0 equals 1, which doesn't make sense, which means we don't have an x-intercept, right? So what's my y-intercept here? Negative 1 over 9. So these are pretty easy multiple choice, hopefully. Um, so again, if I, if, I, if I do a quick sketch, because we should be quick at this now, Again, if you do an actual sketch, you'll have to have the ones correct. So what kind of parabola is this? Well, this is a parabola that started 9 down. Does everybody see that? So I'll use a different color here. Again, my vertical asymptotes go here. This becomes negative 1 ninth, right? Smaller becomes bigger. Do you see? It'll be, look like this. Floop, floop. Yeah? So again, the x-intercept, there is none. OK, how about this one? What's my y-intercept going to be? OK, does everybody see this shortcut for this? Like, these all go to 0. It's just the two thing constants divided, 1 over 20. And again, my x-intercept, I'll get none. And then if I were to factor this, I could get my x-intercepts of my parabola and then um, reciprocate all of them, right? And that's all. all.